everyone and welcome back to Space Engineers episode 12 I will not move around <laughs> and just give you a welcome from the front of my rebel ship for the simple reason that the following footage was recorded a bit after my previous episode and I, in my infinite wisdom, forget to put intro in it. <laughs> so here I am, just recording something quick and uh, after a quick cut you will start seeing the episode where I will find new and exciting things to explore in Space Engineers, take apart and then eventually destroy too. <laughs> Welcome back! Hello folks! Status update! I grinded a lot and I organized my materials. I have around 350 iron, 220 nickel, silver, enough silicon, cobalt, very little platinum. And for the 4.5k magnesium, which doesn't seem much, but I think it should be enough for a lot of ammunition if we need. In terms of raw stuff, steel plate, construction components, motors, large tube, computers, glass, metal grid, and various other things. It should be good enough to do stuff. And even, if you see this one, we even have some thruster components, because I was started grinding down the fruit loop. I will show you in a second how much we have plenty of missiles quite enough gatling ammo some artillery shell which will go into the reformed river ship <laughs> we have some handgun ammunition for the small turrets auto cannon magazine so we should be having everything that we need and what I did, and it's not a finished job yet, but I changed the back thrusters on the river ship. I still have a lot else to change because it has thrusters up there, down there, sides, and on the other side too. Not to mention the thrusters under it. So I still have a lot of work on this before it will be space ready. I was started thinking about it, maybe it's not the best choice for a ship, but eh, I don't care. I'm working on this ship for quite a while, even if it's not the best choice, I'm keeping it. <laughs> I added an ore detector to it, so this should be able to help us detect some asteroids if we choose to go there. And I will choose to go there, I just wanted to sort this one out. This is what remains of the fruit loop. <laughs> I grinded down some of the exterior. I was trying to keep the thrusters for last because uh, there is a gravity field here, active. And I, if I grind these out, I'm afraid that the active gravity field will help this one descend into the hole. <laughs> so, nope, I'm leaving these from the last. And maybe I grind down those that are burning. But yeah, I don't really want to do much damage. Or at least I want to do it systematically. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is cool. I need to relocate these, or at least 
evaluate how many of these are still useful for something because no matter how cool these little robots looked I couldn't really find any good use for them and uh, and they are very hard to to maneuver maybe I should do some uh, re rewelding and and try it out try to maneuver it with my a remote controller block but since these are on an uncontrolled hinge like the legs and the arms I I don't think that there's anything exciting in this for us in terms of usability I, I can't really use them as drones maybe I leave one connected to my stationary turret which is on the other side of this one I think I forgot to mention this I think I forgot to mention this earlier, I created a small turret. Uh, but where did I create it? <laughs> oh, come on, where is it? Oh, there is it, it's in a bit of a darkness. I created this small decoy plus four, five turrets and two decoys and two solar panels. This is quite a shitty construction for a A, a getting turret stuff. I just wanted to have something out here quickly that I can that that can shoot at stuff if some reaver ship would find its way here. Because as you can see, there are reavers everywhere and they are coming pairs. Strangely, the only friendly things on the horizon are the space pirates they are having a factory there I might visit it on my way to the moon but uh, for the moment it was quite chaotic and would take too much work to do anything useful with that I don't really need a factory all the other things civilians ISTG EXMC this stuff are all hostile to us, so as, as soon as I would switch on any antenna, I had to be very careful not to switch on antennas because they would find me and even though I have sufficient firepower, I don't want to deal Energy with low. I don't want to deal with fire coming from rivers and various other sources. At least until I don't have my own reaver ship prepped and ready. Oh yeah, and I modified one of the drones to this creation of beauty. It has two Gatling guns, missile turret, this assault cannon and a racer cockpit, fighter cockpit. And it is quite maneuverable. Let me show you how it looks. So here it is, it looks very funky with the red thrusters. I'm not sure there's much use for it yet, but there can always come a time when I need one small ship with thrusters in space. <laughs> I have a camera on it, I can shoot with my guns if I so choose. And we can use this to assault something if I really need to in a hurry. That was the original purpose of the mosquito lineup. This was one of the drones that we found, the pirate drones. And I'm quite happy with this one to the point that I've actually blueprinted this for later. Let me just Blend it. 
it has limited power, one small reactor I think, or maybe two, so it's not a particularly good and, and long term solution, but I'm sure that it will be useful one day. And one of the other drones that I found a use for is this small grinder drone. Although it has Gatling guns, I have not really chosen this one for the Gatling grinder drone Mark II. And it's basically just a grinder, a medium container and a connector and some small ion thrusters all around. I slapped a, a seat on it and I can go wherever I want with it. I use this to grind the fruit loop. It was faster than grinding it by hand. There isn't much on this anymore that I really want. I wanted to keep the reactors and uh, the bottom thrusters for last, grind out everything else and take all the stuff from this. I was mainly interested in the large ion thrusters or basically large grid small, not, not even large. And uh, my next step will be to change all the thrusters on our river ship to ionic. That also means that I will have to find a way to add the reactor to this, because uh, the current battery power will not be sufficient to sustain the ion thrusters for long. So I somehow need to incorporate a small reactor to this one somewhere. I will try to find a good place for it, where it is good. Unfortunately, this ship was not meant to be used anything other than doing a quick assault straightforward in atmosphere. But that's all right. I can probably pop one instead of this thruster column because I'm pretty sure we don't need 10 downward facing ion thrusters no matter what in space. I had rather thought regarding these hydrogen thrusters on it. And uh, I, I wanted to keep hydrogen thrusters since it is a small hydrogen engine. I mean, not engine, uh, hydrogen tank. But I might rearrange these to, to be directional rather than just straight down. In any time we would be running out of electricity for the ion thrusters or something would damage our reactor then I would probably need some hydrogen power to at least move out of great danger or stop but yeah this is the project for the foreseeable few hours make this bottle ready and ionic and grind down the remainder, remainder of the fruit loop. I might just need to land it, but in order to land it I need to remove the, the drones from here, which I probably will need to grind down because I can't really keep any, any of this for any good reason. Looks cool. They had some ion engines that I can use the parts from. But yeah, this eventually will be something that I will completely grind down. Mainly because it looks ugly as hell. <laughs> Alright, see you in another few seconds with the next update. Engineer, 
I'm picking up a transmission from a trader ship, just at the out edge of our sensor range. Mayday, Mayday, this is the trade ship Garnet Sunbeam. For anybody listening, we are being attacked by Reavers. Immediate assistance required. Mayday, Mayday. Your reclaimed Reaver ship is functional, if you want to go there. Nah, they are already dead. They just don't know it yet. Status update. Welcome back, people. I managed to land the fruit loop and locked it to the ground because, with some of its or basically most of its thrusters gone, it was started to floating away. I had to rearrange back thrusters into up start thrusters, left thrusters, right thrusters and once I had everything I had to lock it to the ground. There isn't much left in it. The tank that I will probably have to keep because this will be a good base of, uh, of another ship if I ever gonna build something. Uh, but I will take pretty much everything else. I probably just put a venting gear on the tank and, and lock it somewhere. And the rest will go into somewhere else. I have this gigantic jump drive here. I'm not particularly sure how I should deal with that one. I probably could put it under my ship. Energy critical. Although I have my doubts if it will be properly fitting here. But who knows? I anyway wanted to do something with this large empty space. So I will probably put the jump drive into my own ship. The hesitation is due to the fact that I never actually use jump drives. <laughs> I know, I've played this game for so long and it just never came up. Even if I had to travel distances, I just, you know, set the direction, switched off the dampeners and then had a breakfast or a lunch <laughs> while it reached that distance. I know, 
I very should have learned how to use it, but this is a good opportunity in this series. I'm learning new things, including the jump drive. And I'm playing differently than I usually do. Namely because everybody hates me, except the pirates. <laughs> Rivers come and go, but I'm not particularly ready to to engage in them. I was debating, since now I have a ton of materials from the Fruit Loop, I was thinking about building a small base somewhere in or around this crater. Because anyway I need to mine the uranium. No energy. Oh, let me sit down somewhere for a sec, like old men's do. So I will probably need to mine out the uranium anyway. So I will probably put some small outpost base somewhere in this crater. Probably I will dig it some distance into the crater itself or into the asteroid. And I put some better turrets around the crater. And that will be just mainly to use some of the materials that I have. And I wanted to leave a little outpost behind. Since this is a good place, uranium is hard to find. I might come back here eventually with a smaller ship if I ever need more power. But yeah. I will continue taking apart the fruit loop. <laughs> There isn't much left of it. It's just a half loop. Or a fruit. And I will continue to replace the river ship thrusters to Ionic. I already I already put a reactor somewhere here in this top section. Behind this one there was a all of two uh, spaces and I used one of them to add a reactor, a small warfare reactor to this because we definitely need more power generation on the river ship if everything will be running from uh, I mean if the ion engines will run from internal power I definitely need something to generate that power. By default this ship only has Batteries, I think it doesn't have any active reactors on it, so I had to add one. But I will probably have to add another one behind these thrusters as well in the other uh, wing or in the other wing or column. And I will also need to add a couple of other things too. Uh, but you know. This ship will see some major renovations before I will use it in battle. <laughs> but yeah, this is what's going on. I come back with another update in a few seconds for you once I change more thrusters to Ionic, added the second reactor, and dismantled what I won't be using from the fruit loop. See you in a few seconds. Engineer, I finished restoring the original chapter of the book we found back at the observatory. I give you a short summary of it. The story is called Jimmy Googles, The God. The story is told as a first-person narrative, the story concerns a party of treasure hunters attacked by natives off the coast of Papua, back on Earth, only one of whom survives, because dressed in a diving suit, similar to the space suit you wear and he is mistaken for a god. The narrator of the story is one of the three survivors of the ship called Ocean Pioneer, which had sunk 20 years earlier in 20 fathoms of water carrying 50,000 pounds worth of gold dust. For us it's not much, but at that time it was a fortune. Jacobs, the ship's mate and another of the survivors, 
suggests a scheme to his companions whereby they mislead the official salvagers as to the location of the wreck and go back to the actual site to recover the gold for themselves. The conspirators recruit two brothers who own a boat, the Pride of Banya, and purchase a second-hand diving suit that uses compressed air instead of pumping, which they nickname Jimmy Goggles. On reaching the wreck, the narrator dons the diving suit and descends to the depths. He finds the ship and a chest containing the gold easily enough, but has insufficient air left to retrieve it, so decides to return to the surface. As he is ascending, one of the brothers, a spear through his neck and struggling with a native, falls past him. When the narrator reaches the surface he sees that two canoes full of natives have attacked the pride of Banya, and deciding that discretion is the better part of valor he dives back down to the deck of the ocean pioneer. The narrator decides to make his escape by walking along the seabed, and after about 10 minutes finds himself on a beach. Before he can reach the shelter of the forest, a dozen or so natives appear, but rather than attack him they fall to their knees. Then they jump up and guide him to a hut in which their idol is kept, believing the narrator to be a god. During his four-month stay he seems to bring the natives luck, but eventually he succeeds in making his escape along the coast, leaving behind his now empty diving suit. I find this fascinating, since at the time of writing, the diving suit that keeps water out was considered an exciting and scientific technology, and people looked at it as the 21st century looked at a simple space suit as engineers did to a simple jump drive a couple of years ago. It makes you wonder what inspiring discoveries we make in the future. All right, folks. I was asteroid hopping. <laughs> I was trying to find platinum because that's what I need for creating more thrusters. Because unfortunately, all the fruit loops thrusters were not enough to to exchange all the X River ship thrusters to Ionic, so I was trying to find platinum and look at my GPS map. <laughs> I was everywhere around here <laughs> and I couldn't find platinum. But our wreck mod came to my rescue just at the outer edge of where I was around 30 kilometers from here a new wreck started to ping and if you look at it through the camera look at this oh, not bad I was trying to be a bit too quick but look at this ionic thrusters all around all around it. It's a wrecked circular UFO ship. And it's a thing of beauty. I mean, it has its faults. It has, I see four guns on this side, three, and four on the other side as well, probably. But look at how many ion thrusters it has. This is the top, I think. I see one Gatling gun, two assault cannon, and I think the third, I mean the second Gatling gun was shot out. And if you look at the bottom, it's the same configuration. Large hydrogen thrusters, small hydrogen thrusters, ion thrusters. Unfortunately, all the ion thrusters are small grid, but that's all right. With this enough thrusters, I will be able to upgrade the X River ship fully. It's even good for a base if you are in a hurry. I see it has refineries, lots of pink gyros. I'm not sure what this mod was. Meant all the ships that I found so far are pink and green and and all those fancy colors. I've not found any military aesthetic design, black, chrome, other type of shit, all of this joker aesthetic. But this is fine. 
I can come here with my reverse ship. It has a gun which has a thousand four hundred meters on it. I can shoot out these guns. Actually, the Gatlings, because I think these artillery cannons will not target characters. So I only need to shut out. Oh, on the bottom side, I, I don't even see any Gatling guns. So let me see the sides. Just thrusters and lights. And on this side. There are one Gatling gun. So technically I can just shoot out that one Gatling gun and grind down the rest of the artillery turrets and get all the ion thruster stuff and whatever is useful from this wreck. I mean I would take it but this is so ugly and we have so much material already. So I probably won't need it. I might take the full hydrogen tank because, you know, I found very little ice so far here. I probably take the uranium because they will no longer need it. So this will be our project for the rest of the day. One thing I need to make sure first though, I need to make sure that the river ship is equipped for survival as well. I need to put a survival kit on it. I, I'm not sure I can fit a, um, a large grid medical bay on it, but a small survival kit surely I can fit. And oxygen. I need to make sure that... Uh, I need to make sure that it can resupply oxygen. I need to put a small oxygen tank on it somewhere. So, let me come back to you when some of these have been established and we are on our way to get more thrusters. So, I'm confident to leave the ship there like that. This one should have plenty of oxygen pressurizing. Seven days of power. And hopefully, nothing will stop me in getting my ion thruster thrusters. See you at the wreck. Right, time to try out something new. I have an artillery cannon here, and I think its range is 1400 meters. So let me just grab that, aim for that Gatling gun, and give it a go. Oh Jesus, well it was totally not it. I think I managed to get it, but hard to tell. Let me get one more. Yeah, this one totally got it. And as far as I remember, that was the only big gun. The rest is not targeting me. So let me just... Do a parking. And try to get closer and make sure really nothing is shooting at me. 
think this gigantic drone is supposed to be SR based or something similar because when I grind this down I gain reputation Inventory with the pirates full. again. Inventory full. 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 And you guys guess if my inventory is full. I guess your inventory is full. Alright, so let me take care of this one. Inventory full. Inventory full. Let me check the top side. There's supposed to be no guns there, but you know. I might have missed something on the camera. There's a reverse layer signal. Five kilometers out. Luckily ah, not going our way. Let me check if this one, if I repair it, will become mine. Oh no, it still says Rex. Inventory full. Inventory full. Inventory full. So there's something on this rack that prevents me from taking it over yet. I think that will be the AI block. We take a look. Hopefully it will not have any internal turrets. If yes, I am shot. Inventory full. Inventory full. Ow, ow. Alright, that's why That's why I made the survivor kit. Let me get back in there and get my stuff if I can. I kind of suspected there will be more turrets. Would have been too easy to have just this much. Alright, so I managed to get my stuff. I still don't know where that gun is. <laughs> But that's not really a necessary problem. I think I can. Let me see if I can just find it. Inventory oh, there it is. Full. Inventory full. Inventory full. Inventory full. Our friendly neighborhood interior threat. Inventory full. Inventory full. Inventory full. Inventory full. Inventory full. Alright, so this was one. But I suspect there will be more because this is quite a symmetrical ship. So something tells me that I will find more. Let's see, maybe here. Was destroyed. All right, I have an expert in finding guns. Let me bring that in. My luck will ever stop. All right. I park. Oh, yeah, there it is. It took a while. is actually pretty close. Eh. I'm just at the edge of it.
Come on. Shit from this. Uh, it seems to be close enough to connect. Probably I just don't have the right. That's what I was talking about. Come on, game, work. Oh, that was the biggest luck spike I've ever seen. This is barely able to handle anything that they connect to this. Warning, hostile takeover protocols <laughs> active on wrecked ship. Overwrite attempt stopped at connector. It disconnected. Correct, the wreck protocols almost took over our ship. What? Oh, Jesus Christ. I'll take it great. Oh. Oh. You know what this is? I connected to this freaking ship station and it take over my river ship. Almost. <laughs> Dang it. did I do? I converted it to a ship and half of it exploded in my face. Oh no, 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 no. This is... Oh, is, it, is it actually good or damaged? What? Your ship is intact. It was not connected. Oh. For a second there, I thought it damaged my river ship. Oh. After much trying, I don't seem to be able to move this wreck from this spot for some reason. I converted it to a ship. I have all directional trust. I can control the gyros. I own the wreck. And I'm still not able to move it. Thrusters are firing, but it's not moving anywhere. This is me pushing forward at the maximum. It looks like it's moving slowly, but in fact it is not actually moving anywhere. I'm not gaining speed. I'm not actually having any momentum if I oh, if I switch off dampeners it seems to be moving with 0.2 meter per second but if I get out of here this translates to actually not moving anywhere So, I came to the conclusion that I won't be able to take this home, unfortunately. So what I need to do is get all the thruster components, because that's the only thing I currently cannot produce. I also take reactor parts and uranium, and I will leave the rest here too. 
and I leave the rest here to remain as a wreck. Let me cut back to you when I got all the components that I need. Oh, and by the way, I fixed all the thrusters on the reverse ship. So now I have multiple thrusts in multiple direction. I left these three thruster here, atmospheric, even though they are not working, just because I don't have anything better at the moment and I didn't want it to put six more ion thrusters here, downwards facing. When I get home I try to find a way to put something useful here. Maybe I can put a refinery here or some sort of a piping and uh, I can create sort of a drilling apparatus which is coming out here so when I go asteroid hopping with this thing and I find something useful I can immediately mine it out too but yeah let me come back to you when let me come back to you when this ship no longer has any thrusters woohoo my first jump drive ever I've seen these things working on a video, but I have not actually used this ever. <laughs> I wonder how it will work. I'm actually quite finished almost with this rack. I gathered all the thruster components from all around it and top side, down side. I gathered all the uranium from it. I do one final look around. And uh, if there isn't anything that I would critically need, I will probably leave the rest here to decay. It should not have any more power, but I still see conveyors active, so probably somewhere I missed the reactor. I need to look into it. And let me come back to you once the final checkout is done and we can try out our jump drive. I know I put it in the least stable place ever, but it's alright, it should still work. I only need this until I get home. I wanted to try it out once. See you in a few seconds. Wreck movement accelerating. Ready to detach on your command. <laughs> All right, folks, I am letting it go. Turns out after I depower it, I was able to move it. So I think the problem was that the hydrogen thrusters were working against it or something similar. Now it's on a route towards enlightenment. It will smash somewhere close to the original waypoint. <laughs> what do you think, Oracle? Where will it land? The calculated trajectory places it somewhere roughly about 200 kilometers north of the observatory. Well, the engineers will need the raw material, so this will be sort of paying it forward to repair the observatory one day by putting a large wreck next to it. A noble thought, engineer. I note its location in our logs for future reference. All right, so let me get back to where I was parking. And for that, let me just switch to my secondary stuff. And look at this jump drive. I can toggle it on and off, I can jump. And I can recharge. 
Okay. Let's see. Jump drive. Let's see. It's settings. Max jump distance 2000 km. I think I only need like 20 km, right? Twenty seven. How far is the thirty one? So well, twenty seven kilometer jump would be nice. And let me jump towards Park Capital P. Let me jump there. Jump to park distance to proximity 31 km. Achievable percentage 100%, 31.83. Oh. I don't want to end up right on top of it. Will it? Ignore Ah, it will ignore it and it will smash me into the ground if I use that one, right? And it's, let me just aim for it and do a blind jump then because I don't have any good coordinate For it, so let me aim for the let's say our prayers. And jump. Blind jump twenty six kilometers. Way to transport 600, almost 700,000 kilos. All right, let's do this. First jump ever. All systems optimal. Jump drive, jumping. Wow, this is cool. And I am supposed to be quite close to where I wanted to go, right? There is my park. Oh, it's four kilometer that way. <laughs> this is very nice. Let's take a look at our loot. Local ship inventories. Identity. Look at anything else. So, we have 400 here. 400 here. 800 here, 350 here, 200 in this one, 220. I guess that was it. <laughs> it wasn't as impressive as I thought it will be. But we still have 2300 Truster components from that ship. 
That's extremely good. How much would I need for a large ion reactor? I mean, ion thruster. Uh, ion thruster. Large. Oh, I would need quite a lot. But... Ion... Large warfare ion thruster. So I would need... 960. So I could, in theory, build two... Large ion thrusters from all those small thrusters that I managed to get. Which is awesome, because I wanted to... Create something here instead of this. Make sure that we have a, a proper thruster rack. Something that can both have ion and hydrogen thrusters. And it doesn't look like a, a clump. <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure that I add one large ion thruster here. I can add one large ion thruster on the other side. And our forward thrust will be ion. And if we ever again need to land somewhere, I will still have the large hydrogen thrusters for that. But I actually have my doubts that I will be able to land with this one. Because planetary gravity is bad everywhere. <laughs> Although it's a bit smaller on the moon. Now that we have this whole ship up here, I'm not sure that we will be able to land it back on Earth. But we will see. Everything has a solution. And as an engineer, I will find that solution. So if I ever need to land on a planet, I will probably make this land on a planet somehow. I'm quite happy that we managed to get all the thrusters for this river ship. And now it is looking good. Doing good. <laughs> The jump drive was a bonus. I have never expected it to be so much fun. I was in my mind prepared for another 10 minutes of going through space and it was popping up right next to where we're supposed to be in one second. Fantastic invention. And this is the first time I ever used it. Things next to do. I wanted to build a base somewhere in this basin somewhere and mine out the uranium. I wanted to design a better defensive towers. Something that is better than this. <laughs> Something that can save our base in case rivers will attack. So something which is close but not that close. <laughs> Something that will protect whatever I will put here. But far away, so it will be distributed. So even if something attacks and destroys them, we will, we will not need to rebuild everything, just that one tower. I have a concept in mind that worked, which is basically one decoy on top, welder under it, and four turrets in four directions, and the rest is just piping. I probably want to make this, make it with solar panels as well, but it doesn't really matter where I put it. It can be probably like two or three 
blocks higher than what it is now. And I want to put some uh, armoring around it, so it will be at least a little bit defended. I want it to be cheap, and I want it to be reproducible. So I will probably blueprint it, it will have a merge block, and I will make it so, so I can just print one out and put it in place wherever I need it. And I will also include a projector in it, so if I ever need to repair it for some reason, then it will be easy. Contrary to the belief, engineers like easy stuff. Alright, so I see from the length of the recording that I have not managed to reach my ultimate goal. <laughs> I went a bit over <laughs> again. I do try to make a bit shorter episodes, just so uh, they fit better, but it's extremely hard. There are a lot of things happening in Space Engineers, and even with cutting out a lot of that, <laughs> I still have a tremendous amount that I wanted to present. After I came back from the ship and started working around the base, I noticed at one point that there's a white marker on the map for a river ship, and I went to explore it. It would have been a bit cheaty to just keep it as it is, but it gave me a good idea about what type of a base I should put inside the asteroid. You probably have guessed if you have seen my Space Engineer's short video called Salazar. <laughs> it's a river research base, and how I made it is basically I took that white ship, I mean white as in uh, not taken, uh, river ship, but it turned out it was actually a trap. <laughs> The first time in, in this series that I actually had to load back a, a disaster, it turns out that the abandoned river ship, or so it seems, was actually booby trapped and full of warheads, which activates as soon as you depower it. <laughs> and I managed to blow everything up to high heavens with, with that one. It was parking next to my base, but it's alright. I did manage to build uh, around it, or more precisely, I found the biggest hole in the asteroid, I drove the river ship inside it, and it took me quite a while, a whole afternoon in fact, while I was cutting into the opening in the asteroid and inching my ship inside of it completely. It took a while, but it was worth it, because after that, I could work down from the other side of the asteroid, creating this hidden research base, which is not even marked because it doesn't have any beacons or anything. And you can go inside it, go down with the gravity inverting lift that is basically just two gravity generators and the lift between them. And you could uh, easily get to the ship which is now completely inside the asteroid. I have not covered the uh, back end of it, but that's alright. It still made a good short video. <laughs> uh, I think this will be episode 12. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to the channel as well to see where this uh, book hunt is going next. In the next episode, I will plan to, after creating a defense tower, starting to go towards my second waypoint and inching towards the moon. I'm not sure what I will find there. Uh, we will see when I get there. <laughs> I hope it will be something exciting. Thank you very much for watching this one, folks. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.